Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where I've got a dirty little chipmunk chasing dog here on. It is Friday, September 10th, 2021. So uh, the little dog and I are in the middle of a war against a chipmunk. That is how I am spending my day. But I'm going to take a <clears throat> few minute break out of the chipmunk wars to do what I do every Friday. And that is head over to mongabay.com for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Manga Bay <clears throat> bring us their weekly uh, laundry list of assaults against our dying planet. Leading off with this story from the great state of Florida. Uh, I've mentioned this one several times. I'm glad to see Rhett finally turning his lens onto this. Manatee deaths in Florida point to a global decline in seagrass ecosystems. This year, <clears throat> Florida saw a record number of manatee deaths. And though investigations are still ongoing, experts attribute most of this year's death to the dieback of seagrass, the manatee's primary food source. The manatee deaths are part of a larger trend around the world. Seagrasses are on the decline mainly because of increasingly clouded water due to coastal development. Other drivers of seagrass die-off include algae blooms, destructive fishing and boating practices, and the warmer, more acidic waters of climate change. There are spots of hope, spots of hope, yet seagrass scientists, a seagrass scientist, warn that we are on the brink of losing many of these important wildlife habitats and global carbon sinks. Yes, it is the seagrass that you can kiss goodbye these ecosystems all around the planet supporting good you know one of the bases of the food chain the seagrass beds uh, just kiss them goodbye one of the underpinnings of the global food chain I think we've heard this one uh, how many weeks in a row but I guess one more time, if you missed it the last three weeks, <clears throat> drug trafficking threatens indigenous Shipibo communities in Peru. Uh, the uh, down there and where this is is kind of on the east flank of the Amazon, not far from where I used to own a place in Peru on the east flank of the Andes, uh, where they grow cocaine, where they grow coca. Uh, it has been the site of intense deforestation. Community members say the driver of forest loss is the illicit coca cultivation. Um, you know, coca is used to make cocaine. And residents say they have been threatened by armed drug traffickers. Yep, yep. Satellite data show continuing deforestation in the area. So we, you can blow the uh, Amazon rainforest up your nose. Yes. <clears throat> Here's a weird one. Uh, now, some woman, a commentary by Catherine Snow. I might have to revisit this on Sunday. I have not gotten my uh, my Sunday sermon together. I'll have to read this entire one. Catherine Snow asking the question, can we stop calling it biodiversity? Well, 
uh, in a few years we can stop calling it biodiversity. A at what point does the word diversity, I guess, well, as long as you have two species of our fellow earthlings are remaining, <clears throat> take it away, Catherine, biodiversity is not an effective term to use in shaping the global con conservation agenda, yet it is at the center of the current IUCN Congress uh, <clears throat> in next month's, you know, big UN meeting on biodiversity. The term biodiversity misdirects attention from the human political, economic, and security realities which have both shaped the despeciation. I love that word. A new, a new, uh, a new term for the collapse. <clears throat> despeciation and removal of wild nature by humans, which must drive any meaningful response, you know, to the biodiversity crisis. Why do you think we have a, a biodiversity crisis? It didn't invent itself, is what I think she is saying. It is humans. It, it is a human crisis because we are the, the one species out of 10 million that has created the crisis. Intact wild nature possesses inestimable inherent value as well as value for humans for a host of reasons which biodiversity as a concept or a frame cannot touch upon but which it often conceals or obscures. So that is an interesting take on that, that they're actually now using the term biodiversity to take the light off of humans. All right, I love this one. Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure that I am in, in a war with a chipmunk. I haven't seen this thing. Uh, it very well could be a rat. Uh, so I, I love this one. Uh, today of all days, <clears throat> seeing the maligned urban rat in a new in a new light. Recent research shows that not only are rats clever. Yes, uh, they are clever. I, I will, uh, and, and so are chipmunks. Uh, but they have a sense of justice. Yes, rats have a sense of justice and are sentient organisms. Um, Parsons argues in this essay that rat issues in urban areas should be dealt with by cleaning up the city instead of acting reactively and often cruelly. Yes, acting reactively. I, I know all about acting reactively. Moving on, okay, who is the latest uh, environmental uh, defender? Are they getting killed or just imprisoned? This is over there in Burma. Uh, as demonstrations and deadly crackdowns continue in Burma, land and environmental defenders are increasingly under threat. So. This week, environmental activist Xiao Min Put became one of the latest political prisoners. Authorities had detained his wife and two-year-old son a day earlier. <clears throat> he had openly challenged the military and reported on illegal environmental activities, making him a, quote, well-known and well-hated target, fellow activists said. Yes. And uh, this next one <clears throat> almost belongs into tomorrow's hopium rant. You, you know, I've already got more than a full palette for tomorrow's 
hopium roundup, so I don't know what to do with all the hopium in Manga Bay. This isn't entirely hopium. It's an article, you know, talking about the challenge of uh, holding all of these uh, corporations to these BS sustainability goals, you know, this, uh, this corporate greenwashing uh, trying to make anybody believe that I, I, I you, you know, uh, that, that any of these giant corporations are sustainable, uh, holding their feet to the fire, and uh, good luck uh, on that. Y you know, how, how can you, <clears throat> I mean, how can you have a problem with, uh, this is talking, talking about this group called Mighty Earth. Mighty Earth. <clears throat> this uh, David versus Goliath struggle. Anyway, let's all wish Mighty Earth luck in uh, holding Goliath's feet to the fire. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> all right. We have crossed four of nine planetary boundaries. What does this mean? The Earth has nine planetary boundaries that determine the threshold beyond which human impact on Earth systems will put society, <clears throat> you know, human society, not to mention the planet, uh, at risk. We have already crossed four of these boundaries. So what four boundaries have we already crossed? <clears throat> we have crossed the climate change boundary. We have crossed, obviously, the biodiversity loss boundary. We have crossed the land system change boundary, which is the number one reason we have crossed the biodiversity uh, loss channel and the biogeochemical flows boundary. Four down, five to go. <clears throat> yes. Um, so, I guess we will be seeing the looming challenges in preventing humanity from overreaching the boundaries we have yet to cross. So at what point, so I guess when we cross one more boundary, we're more than 50% of the way from crossing uh, the, the big boundary. Okay. <clears throat> So I see they have completed the first map of the world's shallow tropical coral reefs is here. And uh, begging the question, uh, I guess this is the first step in determining what percentage of the world's shallow tropical coral reefs are essentially doomed. Um, when combined with a tool that tracks global coral bleaching events in near real time, the new resource provides a comprehensive overview of the trends and changes in global coral reef health. You know, the, the trend meaning a downward spiral into oblivion. Uh, good Lord. Anyway, seagrass to coral reefs to planetary boundaries. Okay, now here is swine fever, the latest. Good Lord, guys. You know, swine fever wiping out what is this wild pig? The, uh, the bearded pig, the bearded pig, the Malaysian bearded pig 
is the latest victim of the swine fever, which is, you know, mostly, uh, I think it started in those giant uh, Chinese pork farms, those, you know, those mega pig farms in China. Uh, blame it all on China. <clears throat> it's, uh, and taking out wild pigs in Malaysia. Oh. All right. What is going on with Brazil's biofuel program? So I, I this is the Renova Bio program has been encouraging biofuel producers in Brazil to emit less carbon dioxide. Yes, uh, there's a couple of problems. Uh, for one thing, the program does not account for the emissions from land use and deforestation, which are significant factors in the production of soybeans, from which 70% of Brazil's biodiesel is derived. Uh, so, let's see, so this one is cut down the Amazon rainforest and plant soybeans to burn as biofuel to save the planet from carbon emissions and then just conveniently ignore the deforestation of cutting down the Amazon rainforest to plant soybeans to fight, uh, yeah, this is how uh, soybeans are saving the planet from climate change. From Brazil, let's go over to Sub-Saharan Africa to the country, country of Sierra Leone where an industrial fishing harbor plan raises a stink in Sierra Leone. Landowners and environmental activists have balked at a proposal to build a Chinese-funded fishing harbor uh, in Sierra Leone. The site is inside a national park that is home to threatened species such as pangolins and chimpanzees and its, and its lagoon which is going to be, a, be destroyed by this Chinese-funded industrial fishing harbor is an important fish breeding area. Yes. Uh, some in the community support the project, saying it will bring in much needed infrastructure. Yes and say those who are, who are opposed to it are outsiders rather than locals. And if anybody is wondering what we're talking about here, this is one of the, I don't know, 10,000 Chinese-funded operations. This is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. This is one of 10,000 talking about building the, the, this industrial fish processing uh, <clears throat> in the middle of a national park in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, this is a, multiply this times 10,000 and you will find why some people claim, I think correctly, that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the, the number one, single biggest, most immediate threat to life on planet Earth. Uh, anyway, enough China bashing. Yes, well, okay, Amazon meet Amazon. Yes, <clears throat> this is how Amazon Incorporated is saving the Amazon rainforest. I should probably put that in tomorrow's uh, hopium 
but hopium roundup, but I'm already full of hopium. Okay. Gee, you will not believe this. A spike in deforestation detected in Papua paper concession linked to South Korea. Huh. Satellite imagery has detected 965 hectares, otherwise known as 2,400 acres of tree loss from January to May of this year. In a concession run by a subsidiary of a South Korean paper company. Ha! Huh. In the easternmost region of Papua. Yes. The findings appear to corroborate an earlier investigation that showed signs of clearing in the concession. Yes. Besides the alleged deforestation, so let, let me get this, this right. We, we have a South Korean corporation, a, a paper company, being accused of deforestation. Yeah, there, there you go. Accusing a, a paper company of, of making paper. Uh, this is what paper companies do. They make paper. They don't make paper out of, uh, out of thin air. They make paper out of trees. Paper is made out of trees. Okay, so when a giant paper corporation moves in to New Guinea, I'm going to take a wild guess. There might be some deforestation happening in here. This is certainly some uh, sky is blue news. The Forest Stewardship Council, which certifies Morim Corporation's paper products as sustainable, says it takes these allegations, quote, very seriously. Yes. The Forest Stewardship Council, I, I need to do an entire rant. The Forest Stewardship Council, I see this crap in Home Depot and everywhere. The Forest Stewardship Council is, is, is one of the biggest crocs of greenwashing on the planet. It is the fox guarding the hen house. The, the, the very notion of a sustainable uh, Asian paper corporation. It is absurd on the face of it. Forest Stewardship Council. What a pile of crap. Uh, send that over to the Saturday Hopium. Uh, round up. Oh, good Lord, guys. I anyway, I got to get back to my chipmunk war. Okay, let's go over to Indonesia. You will not believe this. Indonesia still clinging to coal despite its coal phase-out pledge. Hmm. The Indonesian government has walked back its earlier pledge to phase out all coal-fired power plants, saying now that it will keep running them, but it will fit them with carbon capture technology. Yes, experts have questioned the technical and financial feasibility of the plan. Uh -huh. Senior officials and lawmakers have criticized any attempt to give up coal, saying Indonesia should not blindly follow the, gr the growing global trend toward renewables. As part of its plan for cleaner coal plants, the Indonesian government now wants to burn more biomass, can you say wood chips, alongside coal, which raises a host of new questions 
about economic and environmental cost, you know, uh, opening up the whole specter of this BS uh, discussion about biomass, which more and more uh, research is showing actually, ultimately, when you factor in all parts of it, <clears throat> could be putting more greenhouse gas emissions into the air than burning the damn coal. You know, guys. Okay. As long as we're on biofuel. All right. Here is how water hyacinths, this uh, noxious, invasive uh, water weed, choking out uh, waterways all over the planet. I, I have some water hyacinth growing about a hundred feet behind me. How water hyacinth is going to save the planet. Uh, again, that's one for Saturday. What is going on with jaguars in their, one of their largest strongholds on the planet? <clears throat> Jaguar stronghold in Brazil's Iguacu National Park threatened by road reopening plan. A bill introduced in Brazil's Congress calls for reopening <clears throat> a road that is now closed <clears throat> that cuts through Iguacu National Park. <clears throat> the proposal to reopen the road <clears throat> poses a serious threat to jaguars whose numbers have actually been growing there. <clears throat> the area is home to one-third of the big cat's remaining population in the Atlantic forest. Reopening the road, which has been closed since 2001, will not only increase the animal's risk of being run over by vehicles, <clears throat> but also makes it easier for poachers to hunt them, which is the main threat to jaguars. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, guys, I'm just going to put the hopium in, in this rant. Plant-based face masks. Yes, this young Filipino inventor has you covered. Yes, Kiara Ray Cartojano, age 18, says she hopes the project can reduce the number of disposable face masks discarded in her city, estimated at more than 480,000 per day since the start of the corona panic last year. So I'm a, I mean, I don't even know what city they're talking about. I'm assuming Manila. So one half million of these uh, face masks hitting the streets of one city in the Philippines every day for a year and a half. So 500,000 times 500, what is it, good God, I two and a half million, 25 million, uh, I know it starts out with two five. One city on this planet, one half million face masks uh, just being thrown out uh, every single day. Anyway, enough of the corona panic. Do you believe that rich countries may be buying illegal gold that is driving Amazon rainforest destruction? Hmm, I do not believe this. <clears throat> so who are the rich countries? Canada, the UK, and Switzerland bought 72% of Brazil's gold exports contributing to the violence, deforestation, and pollution associated with illegal mining. Uh, good Lord. Uh, of course, you know that this all 
it, it gets back to this whole discussion about what is the difference between legal and illegal gold mining. Uh, I can't remember who had this commentary. There, there is no difference between illegal and legal gold mining, illegal and legal deforestation. We, we got to cut this crap, people. This illegal. It, it's all uh, illegal. I, anyway, moving on. Okay, this was actually in the mainstream media. One in three tree species in the red, new global assessment says, of the 60,000 known species of tree, <clears throat> uh, about one in three are now threatened with extinction. 440 species of tree are critically endangered. There are more threatened tree species in the world today than there are threatened mammal, reptile, bird, and amphibian species combined. And uh, you will not <coughs> believe <coughs> some of the hot spots. How about Brazil, Indonesia, and Malaysia? So uh, here's an article about you know, introducing jaguars back into the U.S. Uh, we will see if that's ever going to happen. It's basically the same range where they're trying to reintroduce the Mexican wolf back into New Mexico and Arizona. Pretty much the same place they're talking about. And you can see what a reception the maned wolf, I'm sorry, the uh, Mexican wolf is getting by the local ranchers. Imagine if they try to reintroduce jaguars where they have been exterminated. <clears throat> anyway, guys, a uh, couple more because I realize I'm talking to myself. Uh, what is going on with ocean plastic? Not just sea life. Migratory fish, birds, and mammals also fall foul to plastic. A new report from the UN Environmental Program, blah, 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 confirms that plastic pollution poses a major threat to land and freshwater migratory species. Mammals, birds, and fish are affected through various means, including entanglement, ingestion, of plastics, accumulation of microplastics in the food chains, and using plastics in their nesting material. <clears throat> the report highlights that global capacity to manage plastic pollution is not keeping pace with projected growth in the plastics market. I think, uh, as if I recall, they're talking about that this planet, you know, if present trends continue, four times as much plastic will be being produced every year by 2050 than now. In the next 30 years, we are going to quadruple the amount of plastic uh, that, that we are producing. Do your own math. Here's a real interesting story. This is about legal mining, not illegal mining, legal mining in Brazil. So if you remember that this Vale Corporation had that as one or two of those giant mining disasters where their, you know, where their ponds with all this crap in it failed. And so what they're doing now is they're moving all of these kicking all of these indigenous people out, you know, downstream, claiming, you know, so they won't get killed in their next mining disaster. But it's starting to look like more and more people are saying, we're a little bit out of the, uh, the danger zone. 
So what it appears is happening is that this giant mining corporation is pushing people off their land and take a wild guess what they're doing with the land they're pushing, they're pushing these indigenous people off of under cover that it's for their own good. Take a wild guess. They're, they're you know, seeking to mine the land. So, <laughs> very clever. Gotta love those planet eaters. Uh, so we finally, uh, a court finally uh, told a, uh, a, a oil palm corporation in New Guinea uh, to lay off of 222,000 acres of land, an area larger than New York City. Uh, the district had revoked permits after an audit found a litany of violations by plantation license holders. So guess what? The planet eaters are suing the, uh, the local government. A anyway, guys, I could go on and on and on here, but I am, uh, I realize I'm talking to myself and I have uh, Airbnb guests coming in and I need to go get this rodent out of the walls of my tiny house so uh, I don't get an Airbnb review about my rodent invest infested tiny house. So I'm going to wrap this up and get back to my own war with nature going on uh, here at Bugs in a Jar. I guess I need to rename Bugs in a Jar Rodents in a Wall. <sighs> All right, little dog, you need to get back to getting that, that chippy I got. Tell him that chippy where he can go. We're off to... Uh, do war with chippies. Bye, guys.